why are you so determined to be on my cock? Oh man, we getting tired. Hold on, hold on, safe, safe, safe. Excuse me while I save for a second. Um, don't worry. I'm. I'm. A... Hold on. Pick it up. Pick up the board. Come on. Come on. Go. Go. Enter, 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 enter. Go away. I want to see two blues. I want to see two blues. I want to see two blues. But it looks like they do actually just roam around. Which is cool. Like the monsters don't just appear when they need to appear. Like, you know, some of them do, some of the phantoms like actually do roam around. That's really cool. Hi. So hungry. Bro, I don't have any food on me, man. What a bro said. So you're not going to give me food? I guess I'll just have to eat you. Thank God for a talisman, man. Oh my goodness. These spirits about ready to piss me off. I'm about to, I'm really gonna start killing them. I really hope Aiko didn't die. I liked her. I wanted her to survive. I mean, I didn't expect her to survive. I'm more or less like figured she was gonna die. I mean, she just kind of came in as one of those characters that you knew were gonna die. But that doesn't mean I wanted her to die, you know? Talisman? God is so good. I'm finna, I'm stocking up on talismans, man. Cause these phantoms are out of control. These phantoms are out of control this chapter. I don't run it. Right there, a phantom! Look over there. One of the pillars of the six demons is here. It has to be. How do you know that? Just look, the stone I got from Misuto is reacting to something. Excuse me. Don't mind me, sir. Die. You should have mind your business. You should have mind your business. You should have mind your business. It's no use, it's locked up tight. The charm is glowing full force though, it has to be in there. Guess you're right. Let's see if we can find the key anywhere. Those are boards? I thought that was hair, I was gonna try and burn it. Ah oh, man, now we, we, know where, we know where one is, we gotta find the key to it now. I hate that I had to waste one of my talismans, but I didn't even try to use it on her. She literally, she just ran into me. It was her fault. Like, it was completely her fault. I was gonna run, I was gonna try and weave and run away. She ran into me. Like she literally hit herself with the talisman. She grabbed the talisman, like. Got bandages. A diary written on it. Records of Sachiko's growth and development all presented with an abnormally high level of detail. Living through pages is one that immediately catches my attention. During a standard physical, a strange shadow showed up in an x-ray taken of Sachiko's body. We had no idea what it was and Sachiko was terrified, but it had to be removed and that required surgery. It turned out it to be Sachi's teeth. And when you're a little girl with teeth stuck in your body, people treat you like some kind of devil. It took quite a toll on us both. Well, she was a devil, huh? But that had to have been um what it was. Um, the gremlin's teeth. 
And like I said, Sachi Sachiko is a little devil. I mean, she's a little sweetheart, but you can be a you can be a sweetheart and still be a little devil. Oh yeah, I need yeah. Actually, let me use this. I was right. That does. That, I was right. That static is the darkening. I was right. Guys, am I smart? Guys, why? Why? You were just waiting for me, huh? You were just waiting for me, huh? You little penis licker. Do it taste good? Do it taste good? Is it salty? Too salty for you, huh? Too salty for you? You know what? How did that hit me? I, I literally got out the way. Okay, that's fine. What hit me? Stop! D Yo, what the freak, bruh? Small bony object. I don't know, matches? <laughs> the hair immediately catches fire and burns up in one giant, rather foul-smelling fire. A bird corpse. Okay. All right. All right. I appreciate that. Huh? Um, are you okay? Where? He's not here, but where? Pet bird, maybe? Ah, it's cheapers. Thank you, Cheapers and I used to eat this together every day. Please take some as a sign of my gratitude. Ooh, and we can give this to that other spirit in the bathroom. So we can have something to eat. Hold on. You hungry, little guy? I do have a strawberry milk bun on me. You can have it. Thank you. Now I don't have to search for food. Okay. Oh, music room key. Where's the music room? I just had a thought. Maybe I can move those desks. Cause I'm thinking the music room is outside, but it's blocked off by the chairs. You know, I, maybe I can move the desk with Yoshiki. If I select it with him, I don't think so because like the, obviously there's a board there in that other place, but it wasn't letting me do anything to pick it. Oh my goodness. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some lifting here if we want to get over to the other building. You got it, man. Come on, big man. I guess that wasn't a board. What? I guess that just wasn't a board then, but that's weird because every time we saw a board, it looked like that. All right, we can get through now. Wait, no, stop. <gasps> the trauma is reacting to something. Yeah, it's really coming down. When I came here before, I was attacked by the ghost of that gremlin girl, and Aiko's body burst into flames. Holy crap, you serious? That's messed up. Can a person survive something like that? Stop, don't even say that. Nah, she's, she's probably dead. I understand, Ayumi. You wanna hold out as much hope as possible. But the lady is most likely dead. And you know, I hate to admit it too, because I like her, you know? I want her to be alive. That's not a pillar, it's a statue of a wolf. There's something in its mouth. Whoa, what the hell are you? My finger is just barely touching some kind of rock. 
Oh, why would you just stick your hand in there? I think it'd easily be a trap that'll lock it right off. Come on, don't be an idiot. Leave it alone. Shinozaki, get out of there. The hole goes even deeper. Just give me a second. I reached as far in as I could. My whole left arm was out inside the statue. Kishinuma was feeling very uneasy about this, but he had every right to. Especially given what he just seen from the statue that I completely missed. It, yeah, I saw that. It just moved. <laughs> I took too long. No, it can't be Shirazaki. Shirazaki. Just slapped the shit out of me. All right. You know what? That's my fault. I gotta stand by. I gotta stand by that. Boy. Hey. Oi, hey. Nani yo. Just, just give me a second. Shinazaki, get your arm out of there now. That thing's moving. You dumbass! <laughs> what? What? Stop! I don't want this! The hell are you saying? Your arm was a split second from getting bitten off! What? I looked back at the statue and sure enough, the wolf's mouth was now firmly closed. His eyes glaring menacingly at me. That thing wanted your flesh. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, my legs are asleep. Damn. Well, at least you still got your arm. Huh? What's that in your hand? Ah, oh, my legs are asleep. A crystal. It's the crystal from this pillar. Yeah, that's about what it looks like. I at the pillar's crystal for some time, studying it. For us, it represented a rare success in this school where abject failure was the norm. See? I told you there was something in there. You just got lucky. Oh, come on. It doesn't matter. You're safe. That's what's important. Justice. Because I managed to get the crystal in my arm intact, the danger I barely escaped didn't feel as real. I could only regard this as a victory and was reveling in it. Kishinuma was still sour for a bit, but he quickly warmed up to the situation and let out a small laugh. Or maybe the night air had just gotten to him. I wouldn't consider that a victory. Full pump room. Oh my goodness, that traumatizing room. What the heck? Two. Dang it! We got drenched out here! Here, Kishinuma, there's a towel! It's all covered in dust, though, isn't it? No, it's surprisingly clean! Here, you can have the first wipe! What's wrong? After you dry yourself off, give it to me! My hair's a mop right now! Oh, okay, sure! Why did I think she wanted me to wipe her down with it? What the hell's wrong with me? That boy's getting those lewd thoughts. Ew. That boy's trying to get frisky. He's trying to get frisky with Shinaziski. Hold on. Hold on. This might be the first time we've ever seen them in the other room. I wonder, are we going to run into Inumaru? I see that. It's easy. It's a lot easier to see the tripwire in this building. It looks like I didn't have as much difficulty seeing it when I was playing with um Aiko. My lord. There's no other way to go. Run, run, run. Mage's Corp. 
the peak last words where i'll work till i die oh wow okay that's funny i'm not going anywhere close we have to click on the Inside the piano and crash it amounts of human blood and flesh. It must have struck someone with amazing force and speed. Dang, somebody actually got clapped up by it. It tried to get Inumaru, but you know, it failed. I wonder what bum was whack enough to get caught up by that though. The charm is reacting to something. What the heck? Tentacles completely wrapped around the door. Without some needle cutting them, there's no way in. Can you like saw them with the key? Two phantoms at work is insane. I mean, two phantoms at once is insane. Like this is a level of cock eating that like I never even I, I've never hoped to even reach. You feel me? He was in a whole nother room. How? Hold on. Hold on. Dog. Visible ends of each tentacle are sliced off completely. What's left of them immediately withdraws into the room, freeing the door to open. I, I didn't want to go in yet. I wanted to lose that shadow first. This is an art room. What the hell is going on in here? Some kind of black magic, maybe? It gives me the creeps, whatever it is. There was an enormous jet black tree sprouting from the middle of the classroom. Damn! It sure wasn't something like that last time around. This isn't the same heavenly host it was last time around. We can't rely on what we knew from before. But this... This isn't like any pillar I've seen. It's a tree. What? Damn it, don't scare me like that! She did that for a reason. And I'm scared to find out what that reason is. Let's look around here first. You know how the boy can zerky and be. I'm like, I'm, I'd be extra cautious. I'm a little nervous, where's this? Base of the tree along all the split roots, there was a wooden plate displaying words written in what looked more like red paint than blood. Someone has come, someone is here. They're here, 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 here. So so what do we do with them? When will we take our next trophy? I hope soon. How shall we kill them this time? Living humans, I hate them so. Life blood is detestable. Oh how I hate them all. I must snuff them out. 
murmurings of vengeful spirits could be heard all around us. And mixed in with them was a dull tone that resonated through my body like a ringing in my ears. What, what the? This does not feel right. Kishinuma must have heard it too, based on his reaction. Oh, the color had drained from his face. Like a record player needle skipping, the faint, unpleasant tone continued to repeat over and over, echoing within us. I felt like if I stayed any longer than I had to, my head would burst. I was hyperventilating. Hey, where are we? This is a classroom, right? All we can be sure of is this isn't the world we know. Both of us were trembling, and even Kishinuma's breathing had become erratic. The trepidation that rocked us down to our course was something that couldn't e ever truly be described. If you haven't felt it, and I pray you haven't, you'd never understand. Part of it, most of it, probably was due to the fact that we were literally standing in a place that operated on its own logic. Nothing we'd ever learned or experienced applied. I focused my attention back onto the wooden plated by the roots. There was a charm hanging from it. Fashioned out of a wooden plank bound to a thin rope. The rope was looped over its surface into a perfectly patterned mesh, giving it a texture that looked much like a bird's feather or a bee's nest at first glance. What is that? An Indian charm. Or that's what it looks like anyway. But I'm not getting a very positive feeling from it. My breath were becoming in short, choppy bursts at this point. But I had to keep working toward my goal. I clenched the charm in my hand, biting my lip and preparing for the worst. Ah! Osaka? <laughs> what happened? Is this the pillar's crystal? It's beautiful. I feel like warm water is streaming out of it and coursing through my body. Seriously? We got the gym key. Now it's time to head back to the main building. I was like, man, they've been in there too long. I was like, oh, they're going through a, they're going, they're going through a, 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 a what you call it, a story progression. So we can't bother them yet. Let's just wait. We'll, we'll bother them once the, uh, once they come back out. Y'all think Yoshiki can hoop? I'm just thinking about it. Like, if you like, if you, if you gave Yoshiki the rock, like you think he would. Y'all think like he would y'all think he would ball out if he had the rock? Why do I have this on? Well I guess it does it does no real harm having it off, I guess. I don't use it for anything anyways. I'm thinking it might help with the darkening. You know, darkening might shoot up faster if you're in a dark area with no light. So the flashlight helps with that. Are you puppy garden? The charm's reacting to something. It's open, you ready? I feel like I've seen this place before. Really? The last time we came here, I don't remember there being a gym. He's talking about birthday bash. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, uh, what the hell is this? That is a big pile of white shit. It looks like... Stop right there. Huh? 
You were gonna say something disgusting, weren't you? <laughs> I already said it! What? What do you mean? Doesn't it look like soft serve ice cream to you? That's my sister's favorite food. Oh, so your sister, so your sister's really gonna ice cream then? Way too much. She even eats it in winter. I mean, I get cold just watching her. Uh, look at them having a nice conversation about soft serve ice cream while their lives are in danger. It's so sweet. Kishinuma, look up there. Uh-huh, you need a crystal is. I'll see if I can climb it. Huh? Climb it. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Let Yoshiki do it. What, you don't think I can? I may not look good, but I was an expert tree climber when I was a kid, you know? And this pillar is really solid, see? So this will be a piece of cake. I don't know, I think you should... Still, though. Um... Fine, I can give you a boost on my sodas if you want. Make it easier to get started. Me on your shoulders? I wasn't sure I liked the idea. And my expressions made those misgivings blatantly clear to Kishinuma. What's with that face? You'll just be stepping up on my shoulder so you can reach the ledge. Nothing to it, right? Alright. You good? Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Alright, we're not I am not gonna be sprinting at all. We are taking this nice, slow, and careful. Hug the wall, just hug the wall, just hug the wall. Just hug the wall. Hug the wall. <laughs> got it! I got the crystal! Yes. Yes. Alright, come on down. Ishinuma looked up at me, but quickly diverted his eyes when he realized he could easily see up my skirt. Still, uh, nothing from Aiko or Misato, huh? I knew she was gonna fall! I let out a loud shriek, grabbing Kishinuma's attention. Not that it mattered, given our relative positions. What happened? Ew! Human hands! These are human hands! Inside the pillar! There are a lot of people trapped inside the pillar! All of a sudden, I was surrounded by body parts, with hands and strands of hair comprising the bulk of them. A bottle with... <laughs> And then from out the blue, sickeningly cheerful carnival music began blaring from over the gym's loudspeakers. Volume so high as to unpleasantly distort the sound. It was almost like an old record playing from a phonograph coupled up with torch now littering my path. Uh, the music was even more. It was ash. Uh, it was unsettling that everyone would begin whack. Hold on. I'm sinking, sinking! I was beginning to lose my footing as the formerly solid pillar began to break down into a board going on something. Get down, hurry! Go, 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 go! That's so good shit, honorable shit, right? They're like honorable! I'm gonna get the impossible! Go, 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 go! That's so good shit, honorable! Sam began to pour it on my mouth and nose, immediately preventing me from saying another word and more importantly, breathing. The more I tried to resist, the more the pillar pulled me in. The sand was now in my eyes and felt like it was seeping into my skull from there. The pain was almost un un unbelievably unbearable. The weight of the material pushing against me quickly began cracking my ribs and collapsing my lungs. 
There was no escape anymore. I was already gone. Uh, we're about to try this again. I'm not gonna jump down. It's just like I realized I was like actually sprinting, sprinting, and that's not how I. That's probably I probably started sinking because I was like moving slowly. So if I'm moving burst, if I sprint and burst. Hold on. Grab my arm and tried to pull me free from the object. But within his death, there was a little girl with black eyes and she was staring right at us. <laughs> Ew, that's the gremlin! <laughs> the sight was unnerving, but he didn't flinch for long. He continued pulling, desperately trying to free me from becoming part of this pillar's makeup. <laughs> what the hell was that? You okay? Yeah. Let's just get out of here. Now. Ah, what the hell? This music is driving me crazy. What? It's driving me crazy. Same here. Let's head back to the school. So what about the crystal? Were you able to get it? Yeah, here. This is it, the pillar's crystal. Itaragi Academy, class 2-9, just prior to morning homeroom. I entered the classroom school. Can I save, bruh? I can't. I entered the classroom, school bag in hand, and beeline directly for Naomi. And the look on her face, she'd been waiting for me. Morning, Satoshi. Good morning, Naomi. How'd it go at Shinazaki's? Not good. Naomi shook her head. I did go. But her parents said she hadn't, hasn't been home since the day before yesterday. So what now? Something is definitely not right. Her voice quivered. No doubt, memories of our time in Heavenly Hosts were resurfacing from her, just as they had been for me. And my news was no better, unfortunately. Yoshiki. Same story with Yoshiki. According to his neighbor, there hasn't been a single sound coming from his apartment since yesterday, which means he probably never went home last night. I don't want to hear that. I'm sick and tired of this. I don't want to lose it anymore of my friends. Naomi had her face completely buried in her hands at this point. Damn it, I... I think you should know that Yoshiki was really worried about Shinazaki. He said he was in danger. And it has to do with Heavenly Hosts. But that place shouldn't exist anymore. Yoshiki and Shinazaki. What the hell could you guys have gotten yourselves into? In my worry, I did often... I did what I often do when I try to clear my mind. I looked out the window, staring into the cloudy sky. And suddenly there it was again. What is that? There was a solid black spherical object hovering in the sky. You see it too, right, Naomi? Yeah, what is it? Mochida Nakashima. Please refrain from looking outside during school hours. Morning homeroom is about to begin. A homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, entered the classroom with his usual air of authority. Ms. Niwa is out sick today, so third period English will be study hall. Come on, you two, get back in your seats. What are you looking out there for anyway? Mr. Yamazaki, can't you see it too? That black thing? What is that? If even a teacher was startled by this, it must be juicy. Or so all the other students seemed to think as they began to murmur noisily to, and get up from their self, get up for seeping themselves. Yeah. 
No, no, everybody, calm down. Panicking will do us no good. Okay. Cool? I said we in class early. Don't be absurd. If there's an emergency, we'll get a call about it. And if that happens and school's dismissed, then you may go. Right now, the best thing to do is return to your seats. And girls, please don't stand on the desk. The boys can see everything. <laughs> Naomi looked. Me and Naomi looked at one another in the eye. We were both thinking the same thing. I don't like this. Yeah, I've got a bad feeling about it myself. This chill in the air. It's exactly the same as in Heavenly Host. In your seats, that means you. After classes ended, we took a trip to Polonia Academy High School. We needed something to go on, some kind of clue. Anything at all, really. So we just started asking around. Eventually, we encountered a girl who was crying profusely about some friend of hers who's gone missing. They all just disappeared and... Mio, right? Were you friends with Naho Sainoki and Aiko Niwa? Yeah, Saika and I were both really close to them, and they'd always tease us. Sorry. The entire time Mio spoke with us, she was trying to rub the tears from her eyes. Each time she attempted it, it made her ponytail twitch. What's going on anyway? Where did they all go? And what's that black thing? We pledged after our escape not to burden others unnecessarily with information about Heavenly Host, feeling that most people were be simply better off not knowing. If you're looking for info about Naho and the others, then something scary must be going on, right? Uh, well, uh... I don't need any details. I know I wouldn't be able to help even if you told me, but please... Please save them from whatever it is. She was actually grabbing my shirt now, and the tears were pouring from her eyes all over again. Wherever they are, they're probably in a lot of pain. Aiko Niwa, the girl we met at Makina's of Shinazaki's apartment. She seemed calm and confident, even a little full of herself, but somewhere deep down, I felt there was a chink in her armor, and I think Naomi had felt it too. To be honest, even we're not exactly sure what's going on. But if we figure anything out, we'll make a point to come back and let you know. Mio rubbed her eyes again, her ponytail perking up once more, and looked up at us with big wet saucers. Out of options, we elected to retry the Sachiko and Ever After ritual. That was our method to ingress into Heavenly Host last time, after all. With Proxy Doll in hand and my bag of supplies at the ready, the two of us yanked our arms back as hard as we could, splitting the paper in two so that we each held a piece. It's no use. It really isn't working anymore. Yeah. Looks like the curse of Heavenly Host has been cleared after all. Seems like it. With no Sachiko anymore, that whole school should have been totally destroyed. And I bought a mountain of water and calorie biscuits to bring with us. I patted my bag as if demonstrating to Naomi how much was in it. It should have been fairly obvious, though, as the bag itself was practically bursting at the seams. Helicopters flew about overhead, no doubt in response to the mysterious black orb that appeared in our sky. We watched the flurry of activity above us as we glumly left Polonia Academy High School, no closer to any answers than, than we were before. Glancing over at Naomi, I saw the sour expression on her face and tried to imagine why she didn't want to go back home and it wasn't hard to think of numerous reasons. Hey Naomi, are you gonna stay with Miss Niwa again tonight? Yeah. Okay. Well, would you like to stop by my house first? My mom and Yuka too, of course, seem to have really taken a liking to you. Are you sure you don't mind? Her expression instantly measurably brightened. I don't mind at all. In fact, I'd appreciate it. Yuka, can, you, you can, can stand some cheering up herself. Thank you. We shifted direction slightly and began the relatively short foot trek to my house. It was an ordinary and rather pleasant walk after all, until Naomi caught sight of her mother turning the corner up ahead. At the time, I didn't realize who it was. 
She was clasping the arm of a young man sporting a shaved head and a construction outfit with some sort of insignia and 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 blazon on the back of his uniform. Mom? She was clearly very close to this man, cuddling up to him as they walked, pulling his arm into his bosom and sneaking a few kisses before the pair disappeared down an alleyway. What's wrong, Naomi? It's nothing. Nothing at all. Her voice had gone up a full octave as she said this. Clearly something was indeed bothering her, but I had no no way to know what it was in the moment. It could only take her at take her at the at her word. And her word was by all appearances that everything was fine. She more or less closed off herself outwardly, pretending not to have seen a thing. As we drew closer to my house, we began to see a strange light illuminating the area around it. And that area was different than what it had looked like this morning, at least to say the, to say the least. There was now a bamboo wall surrounding my home. And most notably, we now had a hot spring. Are they? Huh? What words are there for situations like this? Flummoxed? Baffled? Bamboozled? This wasn't here this morning. What the hell is Mochita Springs? Calm down, Satoshi. Let's just go inside and see. Immediately upon opening my front door, however, we were greeted by a sign reading this way to the natural spring. The Ministry of Descent plans to issue a statement at 1800 hours regarding the massive black orb that's appeared in the stars of Tokyo. We entered the dressing room only to find Yuka naked. <laughs> Welcome, big brother and Naomi. The water is great. Yuka! Yuka! Yuka was holding a toy goldfish, a towel, and a small beach ball in her hand. What the? What, what are you doing? That's not the question I should have asked, but I was in too much shock for my words to come out the way I meant them to. And Yuka didn't seem to mind. She just smiled back at me as joyful as I'd ever seen her. Come on, come on, it's amazing. Grabbing one of each of our hands, she slid open the glass door in the back and led us to Mochita Springs, proper that we'd been hearing so much about. Oh, that's Satsuki. We saw her in, um, what you call it? Birthday badge. Hey, you bro. <laughs> Gotta say, this is one sweet suck. <laughs> Who? There was another, there was another girl already soaking in the springs. A young girl around Yuka's age sporting a stylish hairdo. Is that really stylish, though? Huh? Don't tell me you've never met her before. She's a friend from class. Her name is Satsuki Mizuhara. Nice to meet you, bro. Nah, you better be sure to keep your eyes up high, okay? Not that I expect you to be too turned on by these raisins. I'm not entertained by this. What the hell? Stop jiggling them! It was official. Nothing made any sense anymore. What the fuck is going on around here? Hang in there, Satoshi. Naomi had grabbed hold of my shoulders as if to keep me upright in case I decided to faint, which all things considered was probably a sensible precaution. <laughs> of course it's you! You're pissing me off! You need to stop bringing all these strange things into my household! Isn't this wonderful? Miss Kuan? It's good for your health. Plus, sulfur springs help ward off evil spirits, so it's a win-win. I asked to have them. I asked them to have everything built by noon, and as you can see, they delivered. My company's construction division is quite resourceful, wouldn't you say? How can you do something like this without asking permission first? I pointed my finger at her in an accusatory manner. As was the style at the time. Well, now, welcome, Satoshi. And the same to you, Naomi. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. Oh, hope I'm not intruding. 
Suddenly, I found myself shuddering down in my core as my mom appeared before us wearing nothing but a bath towel. Awesome. Mom! Her skin was bright pink and she seemed to be in very high spirits. By the looks of things, she was in the springs herself until just a moment, just, just moments before they, we arrived. When she evidently stepped out to the kitchen to get a large number of beverages. Yeah, if you're gonna go back into the house to get drinks, shouldn't you at least wipe yourself down first? You're sopping what? Yeah, sure. Anyway, everybody grab a drink. Yuka and Satsuki were also in very high spirits. <laughs> As was Miss Kuon. <laughs> what do you say we take a group photo? A commemoration of the establishment of Mochita Springs. Here, everybody line up. Just like that, say cheese. <laughs> Naomi and I were forced into the frame as well. Like it or not, we were now a party into this madness. <laughs> Our eyes were basically pin pricks at this point. None of this seemed even remotely real or neither Naomi or I had any idea how to react to it. I took the drink my mom handed me and without even checking what it was, I chugged down a few gulps. I was thirstier than I thought apparently. What the, what, what, what flavor is this? There was a white, thick liquid inside the milk bottle I was get. It had a faint tint to it when viewed under the right light, but like the flavor, I couldn't quite identify it. This color, is it fruit flavored milk? I turned the bottle to read the label. Apparently it was Niwa flavored. Miss Kuan, I can't thank you enough for building this lovely hot spring on our property. You're welcome here anytime you'd like. Here, it's the spare key to the house. I don't know about that. Oh my, Mrs. Mo Mrs. Mochita, I don't know what to say. Are you certain it's all right for me to have this? Of course, there wouldn't be a Mochita Spring if it wasn't for you after all. As far as I'm concerned, you've got a one year free pass. That night, I found myself tossing and turning in my food on. I just couldn't get it. To, I just couldn't get to sleep for the life of me. So I tossed the covers aside and got up. Might as well go for a dip. It's been the craziest day I could recall in this world, anyway. In this world, anyway. After all, the commotion had died down and our many guests had departed. Dad had came home and predictably was in the springs right away with a carafe, his favorite sake. I had a hard time justifying Miss Kuwan's arbitrary actions, not to mention my family's utter, utter willingness to accept them. But in the end, I had to admit the hot spring was pretty nice. The rest of my family was still sleeping, so the house was dead silent. That did not sound like silence at all. I took off my clothes in the dressing room and slid open the glass door, and there, sitting on the edge of the hot springs, completely uncovered with Miss Kuan. Let me see. My face instantly turned bright red. She was a fairly attractive woman after all, so being alone with her like this was kind of exciting. My cock is hard. But looking at her now, entirely exposed as she was, revealed to me that this shapely woman wasn't quite as shapely as I'd assumed. Her body was abnormally worryingly thin. She was a definition of gaunt, looking every bit the part of an infirmed elderly woman from the neck down. She has no muscle, no fat, no meat on her bones. And I could have sworn I caught a slight glint from the corner of her eye. She didn't seem to notice me, so I was half tempted to slide the door and pretend none of this ever happened. But no, I had to come clean. That ass fat! Hold on. <laughs> I didn't see it change, so that scared me. Despite the fact I was a much younger man and as her student, no less, she made accident absolutely no effort to hide her nakedness. In fact, she actually seemed a little excited to be seen this way. 
Oh, you, 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 you a freak. Why are you in the bath at this hour? Sorry, did I wake you? No, that's not what I... Never mind. Where's Naomi? She's sleeping soundly in my home. I called her family again today and her mother seems to have calmed down quite a bit. That's good to hear. I was legitimately relieved. But I was also having trouble concentrating on the conversation. It took every ounce of focus I had to avert my eyes from the things I knew I should be staring at. Could you cover yourself, Miss Kuan? Oh dear, <laughs> my apologies. She immediately got up from her spot and dunked herself in the water up to her neck. Due to its mineral content, this was a very effective means of being at least partially obscuring her body. What about you? Aren't you cold? Just stand there like that? You should get in as well. I panicked at the realization that I too was completely naked right now. I covered myself with my hands and I could feel the blood rushing to my face. And then it started rushing down a little low, turning me turning me on, hold on, turning me what I was quite certain must have been an incredible shade of red. Hold on, where's she looking? Recovering as best as I could from that embarrassment, I stepped into the water, choosing my spot carefully, so as to put some distance between me and Miss Kuan. Was you crying like a little? Were you crying right now? Were you crying right now, Miss Kuan? I just had this strange feeling that you were. If not, then I'm sorry to ask such a weird question. Actually, I was pondering, thinking about how nice it would be if time just stopped. Miss Kuan, why are you doing all this? Building a hot spring in a student's house, hiring private bodyguards to do your bidding, none of it even makes sense. It's all just so weird. It's, it's making it hard for me to sleep. Are you asking about these things specifically, or do you want to know more about who I am? Both would be nice, I thought. If you're asking about those things specifically, the answer is because I want to protect others. Protect others from what? And if you're asking about who I am, didn't I already go over that with you kids at the start of the year? Well, uh, I was previously a humble civil servant for a certain large corporation, but then worked my way up to CEO and realized I could make my dream of becoming a teacher a reality. So she's a CEO then. I guess that explains how she's able to afford all this crazy stuff. Does your corporization produce that fruit milk I was drinking earlier? The label said it was Niwa flavor, which I might add was is, is kind of a... Yes, that's one of our products. I made it for kids like Yuka who can't decide if they want yogurt, plain milk, fruit milk, or coffee milk. Now they don't have to decide. They can enjoy every flavor at once. Okay. Now, was that enough information to state your curiosity? I can understand where Miss Kuan is coming from, I guess. But her approach is just too haphazard. Her ideas are well intentioned, but far beyond all notions of good sense. I scratched my head. What's wrong? Nothing. I, I was just thinking about your curry. My curry? She seemed genuinely confused. I guess I heard the idea of feeding me pre chewed curry was just another stroke of brilliance, maybe. Not at all something that might keep a poor high school boy up like boy like me up at night. Actually, how old is Miss Kuan anyways? I really wanted to know, but couldn't bring myself to ask something so rude of a lady. Even if I'm sure she wouldn't have minded. The more I thought about it though, the more intrigued I was by this enigma. I began shiftingly sh I began shiftedly turning my gaze toward her sh in short intervals, examining her body for clues. Her face had the texture and hue of a woman in her early 20s. But her body was another story. All of her skin was smooth and beautifully toned as that of her face. But there was so little behind it. Ribs fully exposed in every detail. Even down to her abdomen, I could make out indentations where her internal organs were practically jutting out. There was no muscle, no fat, just skin and bones, literally. Her proportions didn't match up with one another. She was like a construct built out of spare parts. 
It felt as if the person soaking before me wasn't even entirely human. This Kuan suddenly let out a mischievous giggle. Did she catch me staring? What is it? I was just reminiscing about my first day as a as assistant teacher for your class. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. My memory there obviously was a lot different from hers. Who I knew I wasn't even a part of it. The TA who showed up that day in my mind wasn't always would be Yui Shishida. I can still vividly remember her tripping up on a step up to this teacher's desk and tearing her skirt. She had to hold the rear of it together with a safety pin for the entire day. But eventually, even though we were now living in a different reality, a world without you, Miss Yui, Shinohara, Suzumoto, or Morishigi, we had no memories of the alter alternate events from this existence. I love you. Hoi? Excuse you? I'm in love, Satoshi. My mind went completely blank. My eyes were swimming in my head and I couldn't even see straight from the heat of the water. I had to have misunderstood her. No way my teacher is a pedophile. <laughs> With what? Miss Kuan smiled widely and her cheeks turned a rosy red hue. But only for a split second, then she was looking wistful again. Pangs of undue gout and dread that she could not burn that I could not burn began to well up inside me. I knew what the next word out of her mouth was going to be. You. Miss Kuan was almost like a mass of innocence as she spoke that single word. Her eyes locked on the mine and froze them solid and I couldn't look away. <laughs> Come on, stop messing with me. When you're done with your soap, please go straight home, okay? And also, you're very close. I, I know, like, you don't like kids. You know, you're a grown woman. You know, you're a very grown, respectable woman. You don't like children. I was dumbfounded. I immediately and very quickly got out of the bath and headed for the dressing room. This was all just too, too weird. I looked back at Miss Kuan and unsurprisingly, she seemed almost deflated. She was looking down at the water and I said of utter dejection. I turned to face her, still feeling a strange mix of guilt and awkwardness. But allowing guilt to settle in, I guess is what he said. Miss Kuan? I'm not messing with you. After saying that she closed her eyes and turned bright red, I was pretty sure I wasn't from the heat. Despite her physique, she seemed like a school girl in a mo meet. I began to waver in my convictions. I felt like I had no had to justify not returning her sentiment. But I, I don't know anything about you. She twitched a little like this. Had I gone too far? Was I supposed to know more about her in this reality than I actually did? After the longest few seconds in recent memory, her head dropped in an absolute in a look of absolute sadness washed over her face. I'd never seen her like this before. I didn't mean to hurt her. She she had to have known that. What she didn't know and what I couldn't really explain is that I'd only been a part of this reality for a very, very short time now. So I genuinely didn't know anything about her. I tried to think of a way to convey this to her. My mind just kept drawing blanks. It was all just too absurd, too fantastical, too implausible. Miss Kuan, I... No, it's all right. I'm sorry to have sprung that on you. She slowly turned her back to me. Part of me was relieved by her acceptance, I guess. But another part of me was something something. There was a moment of silence and then Miss Kuan's white waterproof watch wrist broke it with a sudden loud beat. All the sadness in her expression gave way to a surprise as the numbers on her watch display, which I realized now hadn't changed the whole time, began counting down. I felt almost as if I'd been saved by the bell, so to speak, and forced a small laugh, hoping that this interruption might help move the topic away from me. It's Kuan, what kind of watch is that? Is it, is it measuring something? She smiled. It's part of my research. The timer had stopped, but it's on the move again now. A timer. Oh, is this research for your company? It is. There was something about that smile of hers that was strangely haunting. It would come to leave a lasting impression on me. 
Well, I think it's about time to head home. I took the day off today, but rest assured, I'll be back at school tomorrow. See you then. It's cool, huh? I just want to say thanks to you. Nayumi and Yuka seem a lot happier now. I'm so glad. I think the same could be said for me, Yoshiki, and Shinazaki, so thank you. Thank you for healing my friends. Thank you for healing my friends' wounds in this strange new world. It's what I was trying to convey, and somewhere deep down, I think the sentiment got through. I'm pleased to hear you say that. And I want to thank you as well, Satoshi. With that, she slowly and meticulously waded her way to the edge of the spring. Whoopsie daisy. Which point she stepped out of the water directly in front of me. You really need to cover yourself, please. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's how we're okay. I want to go back to the art room. I remembered I saw something in there that looked like I probably was supposed to grab it, but I was a uh, understandably afraid considering the fact there was a bunch of demons over there. Uh, we got a loose board, W. Right here? Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh man, we don't have any bandages. Oh, the pool. This way, over here, Kishinuma. Hold on, don't go by yourself. We're almost there. We're almost there, everybody. Hey, is this where really where it is? No doubt about it. See the charms reacting. But this is that locker room. Same old showers as last time, and same old cubbies too. Just as creepy as ever. Yeah. Those covers are particularly creepy. I really hope we don't have to go digging around inside them. Wow. Getting right into it, I see. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Didn't you just hear something? Uh, don't scare me like that. Sorry. Well, no, if you heard something, we might want to, like, you know, be cautious of that. Just in case. I personally wouldn't want to risk it. What the hell? Let's, let's check out little bro body. I don't know why bro is drinking from the from a, a heavenly host bucket. Nothing good can come from that. I wonder what like what like what's canon? Like do they canonically get all the name tags? Or do they canonically get some or do they canonically just say like forget name tags, but we getting up out of here. Oh hell no. Yo pool. Definitely not a fan of this place. I can't remember it too clearly, but didn't I almost drown in here before? Yeah, and I don't really want to go through that again. But let's not do any diving this time around, okay? Well, it's not like I want to be here. You're on a boat! <coughs> hey, wait, I told you not to go out by yourself. Ayumi, you are pissing me off. You can't keep going off by yourself like that. That's how people die. I have one too. The stone's indicating it's in the water. Are you serious? How can you possibly know that? 
Look, the closer I hold it to the water, the stronger it reacts. Yeah. But that water is full of all kinds of debris. There's no way we can get in there safely. I guess not. You don't remember the last game, bro? We got her up. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. All right. I was about to say, like, don't be stupid. We just got to go to that other room and um, turn the water, um, drown, drown the water. But no, nah, we can't. Rust and mold. Can I go around here? Oh, what's up, bud? I don't know why you would leap into the pool. Are you dumb? Hold on. What, bro, what Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Come on. Can you... So what's the move? I almost didn't even see that. Okay, I I can't I can't even be mad about that. That's my fault. That was 100 percent my own stupidity. Can you shut up? It's your own fault. Like, I told you to leave me alone. Like, if you just keep attacking somebody that told you to leave them alone, it's your, it's your own fault if you die. Uh, now it's letting me click it. Okay. This gap is too wide to jump. There's got to be something we can use to cross it, though. Yeah, yeah, come on. I don't trust this. I'm saving. All right, let's see what's coming. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see what we're doing. Wonder if this key will work. The key will probably work. Yes, it fits. That sound. Okay, the pool water should be drained now. Let's check it out. Huh? What is that? What the hell is this? The pool water wasn't drained and said it was frozen. Wow, but how did this happen? Why did this happen? I know- Ayumi, you're so stupid. Gosh. Seriously, just wait for me, damn it, I swear. Oh, no, no, no. I don't like this. No! Ouch. Seriously, don't just... What? What's wrong? The center of the frozen pool was lit up with a large pink mass visible beneath the surrounding ice. It was impossible to tell exactly what this mass was, however, through the cloudiness of the frozen muddied water. What is it? I don't know, a, a jellyfish or an octopus maybe? Not that that would make any sense. It, this is where the charm is directing us though. See? Brian? What the? I got a bad feeling about this. Let's get out of here, Shinazaki. Shinazaki, can you swim? My feet can't quite... What was that? Who cares? Just swim over to me. What's wrong? Something touched me. There's something in the water. Okay, it's gonna be all right, okay? Grab both of my shoulders. Don't panic. You apply too much pressure, we'll both drown. God, I'm just glad she learned how to swim after almost drowning here before.
What's going on? What's going on? I'm not getting any closer. Whoa! What is this? Hentai? Bursting from the very center of the room, there were now large pink tendrils of flesh flailing about. Each one stained with liberally with blood. Damn, like something out of a nightmare. Kishinuma began to tremble at the sight of this bizarre monstrosity. Though it probably had more to do with the fact we were both now being pulled toward the center of the pool, but it's in a way! You gotta be fucking kidding me. Buddy. Wait. Come on. Come on. Yo. Yo. Mr. Katana! Mr. Tango! Mr. Tango! Shinazaki! Shinazaki, where are you? Shinazaki! Through the murky waters, I only saw fleeting glimpses of Kishinuma, and he only saw fleeting glimpses of me, with tentacles protruding through my chest and pulling me. I've been completely impaled multiple times in multiple places and died virtually instantly as one of the giant squid's razor-like limbs penetrated my heart. No, please! Damn it all! Ah! Why? Why did that not work exactly? I'd like to know. There we go. There we go, I did it. About freaking time, man. This took too long. Ooh. Mister? Ayumi? I did all that! All that struggle to save you! And you got caught anyway! You know what? Just just ring her! Just kill her! Damn it, let her go! <laughs> For a moment, all hope was lost, and all at once there was a flash, a brief shame, and the unmistakable squelch of metal slicing through meat, and the octopus's arm was severed. What? <gasps> Did my dear Sachiko save us again? Did my daughter save us again? An ear-piercing sound echoed through the entire fenced-in area and the whole atmosphere suddenly changed. The water reverted to its normal muddy color and the light, rain, and wind suddenly etching their usual patterns into the muck. <laughs> what just happened? Shinazaki, you okay? I'm still alive, so I'm fine. Could have fooled me. I was clearly not fine, but Kishinuma's nervous laugh had a certain reassuring quality to it. Magari? Who is that? That's the magical girl, right? At the poolside stood a strangely dressed girl brandishing an enormous scythe. Oh. There's nothing fine about either of you. Either you're... Everything you're doing in here is reckless and foolish. I hope you're at least learning your lesson. Y you Who are... Pleasure to meet you, Ayumi Shinazaki. 
My name is Magari Mizuki. I'm an executive officer in the Martubas. And I just saved your life, luckily enough. You're the one who saved us? Thank you. Martubas? Are you referring to the secret society that calls themselves Martubas Tomb? I didn't realize it actually existed. So, what's your involvement here? How do you know about us? We're supposed to be a secret society. Yeah, well, Shinazaki's an expert on old urban legends and stuff. Not much she doesn't know. Magari glanced at Kishinuma for a moment with an ice-cold expression. You broke my boobs, you bastard. Once I kill Mizuto, you're next. Uh, hey, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't grow up a damn thing. Don't listen to her, Shinazaki. I mean, look, I'm sorry I latched on to you, but I needed to come here in order to protect her no matter what. You're wasting your time protecting someone like her. Huh? The hell gives you the right to say that? Magari ignored Kishinuma's question completely and turned her attention to me. That's crazy. You weren't able to obtain the Book of Shadows here, were you? I was assured you had the ability to return the Nirvana back into the book. So I've been helping you out from behind the scenes. What? You have? This revelation seemed to instantly calm Kishinuma's rage. I don't have it, but that's because I was tricked. You don't have the book. The means are irrelevant. All I care about is the end, and you failed miserably. You wasted my time. You're completely worthless. So this is one of the crystals of the six demons, is it? It's blue. So that would make it the Seraphod of Mercy. So you want to know who I am, do you? Yeah. Well then, once again, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm your enemy. Magari took the glowing stone and attached it to her necklace. If you keep following that fucking your girl Misuto's orders, make sure you're prepared to die. I'll be taking this. You said all those red letters everywhere? You have no idea how big a curse you're messing with here. So don't stir up the Nirvana any more than you already have. Curse? What are you talking about? Please, give it back! Dang. This is really bad. What do we do? Whatever we do, we need to catch her or we can't go home. Shinazaki, stay indoors. I'll be back. Oh, wait, Kishinuma, I'm going with you. Where did he go? You're joking. You're freaking joking. You've got to be playing with my balls right now, bro. Did she teleport? I haven't seen any trace of Aiko or Misuto either. There's blood coming out of there. That door really scares me. I... That's... That's the guy out of town. Who is that? It was the enormous man I seen before passing out when I first arrived here in the new heavenly host.
This giant man who stood before me wore a steel helmet and was splattered with blood all over his body. <laughs> hey, yo. Yo, yo. Oh! He swung his giant axe at me! It's Blade alone can easily eat the size of a human body! Run, run, <laughs> run. I dashed and swim, but the floor of the school where I struck was utterly destroyed. Yo, if that thing hit me, I would have died. I probably should run. Survive for 60 seconds. What? Come on. Run. Run. What, bro? I li there's literally no way out. Okay, I juked him. I juked him. I juked him. I juked him. Just go. Come on, bro. It's been 60 seconds. No! I looked down to see my pelvic bone hit the ground with a dull thud, followed by a series of plops as a red and a red vapor as all the viscera and internal organs inside me piled out on top. These wrong ends are kind of mid, I'm not gonna lie. I wish they had CGs for the wrong ends, bro. Like, y'all need to get back on top of that. But, holy crap. Right over here. Yeah, come on. Come on, where your ankles at? Where your ankles at? Where your ankles at? Where your ankles at? I got them right here! I'm eating your ankles for breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner. I'm having sex with your ankles. I'm plowing her. I'm plowing your ankles in the bed. I got her. I got your ankles in the comforter, nigga. W. Bro said, let me go back home. I gotta make sure my ankle, I gotta check on my ankles. She ain't, you ain't having sex with my ankles? What's happening? <laughs> Kishinuma, where are you? Yeah. I hate this. Don't start with this. Don't start with this. Don't start with this. It's Misato. It was Misato, hell not. Nah. I, I really don't trust this nigga, bro, because it was already strange that he was acting so casual when, when we're split up and everything, right? That was already strange. And now it's strange that he knows every single time we're losing motivation, he calls us. He's watching us, bro. He's watching us. And then the fact that Magical Girl was also watching us and helping us from behind the scenes... That gives more evidence that Misuto is probably watching us from afar. And then that makes sense because when Aiko came here, they weren't split up. But when Yoshiki and Magical Girl came here, they were split up. When us and um, Misuto came here, we were split up. That's because they're veterans and they and as soon as they got here, they instantly went into the shadows. Oh. Hey, hard at work, huh? Oh, yada. I can't take this anymore. I got separated from my friend. All I want to do is go home. Man, your endurance is shit, isn't it? You don't have to talk to me like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. There are only two pillars left, right? Each time you break the seal on one of them, I can feel it. I can feel the Nirvana's energy wavering. 
That's how I know you're hard at work and doing your best. A sudden and un unambiguously genuine comment compliment like that from Misato of all people reassured me more than it probably should have. I began to get misty eyed. One of them was taken by a girl named Magari. Magari Mizuki, huh? Things haven't been going as planned for her, so I bet she's pissed as hell right now. I wouldn't worry too much, though. She's after the same thing we are, so she'll show up again to try and get the other crystals, and when she does, we can nap the one she took. Okay. So, uh, just keep on going, I guess. I'm in what looks to be the core of the school, so I'm gonna go do a little digging of my own. Trust me, we'll find each other. When we do, we'll get the hell out of here. All right, I'll do the best I can. That's a good girl. Pause, nigga. I knew it. I said, I think in the last episode that Misuto was probably going back and forth. Except Misuto was actually talking to me from back home. He was standing on top of a jungle gym during the entire conversation to be exact. He was letting me do the dirty work while he used the Ever After Stone to jump back into the real world on his own. There was no way I could have known that though. I'd resolved to just to soldier onward and unlock the remaining pillars, truly believing Misuto would swoop in and save me in the end. We'll fire our way back to reality together, Ayumi. As he stared intently at the black spear in the sky, a creepy smile spread across Misuto's lips. And in his hand, he held a thick black heart for a striking resemblance to the Book of Shadows. <laughs> Who would have guessed the old man's manuscript could come in handy in a place like this? There's no Book of Shadows in there. I'll just have to make my own. Oh, textbook super villain ass nigga. Get out of here, pussy. Yo, I'm gonna be real. This is so hard. I'm really rocking with this game right now, man. Navigating is really confusing, but besides that, like, so far, everything about this game is really nice. Like, the story, see, the story's kind of, the story's pretty hard. You know, the story's pretty hard. The, the gameplay is awesome. Like, so these, these new characters are pretty cool, too, except for the gremlin. But so far, I don't really have any issues with this game. I heard a lot of people saying like Chorus Party fell off after the first one, but I don't get that. Like Book of Shadows was a really was really a really fun experience, and so far this game is really enjoyable. But peace out, I love you guys. Uh, we gonna we gonna tap into Chapter Five next time. Uh, love y'all.